This is a fun little sampling case that I've made. I'm about to have a big system reorganization, try and fit some extra modules in. But before I do, I thought I'd document it because there's actually, there's some fun stuff in here. It's really nice to play with. And um, there's some interesting modules and interesting tips and tricks here that we could probably, uh, probably would be worth documenting and sharing. <laughs> So what is this case and why did I put it together? Um, it's a small little Erica synth case. I think it's 42 HP, I think. I think it was originally designed possibly for the Pico system. I don't have any Erica synth modules actually, but this case is lovely. It's got a little self-contained power supply. It's not too shallow, like the, the pallet case and particularly the 4MS pods are, are very, these are, these are very shallow. There's really not much depth in there to get, uh, to get some chunky modules in. Um, uh, particularly when you start uh, combining tiny little 2HP narrow things that you like in small cases, they can often be quite deep. That's the compromise you, you get for, for not using too much HP. This configuration is how it is because mostly it's how it will fit. <laughs> um, it's got enough juice to power all these modules and it's just about the right sort of size for experimenting on one specific thing. I put this case together to take to a local tech meetup to show my fellow nerds like the joys of, of modular synthesis without actually having to take an enormous system and prepare a massive conference talk or anything. I could just take one little contained box and show some of the more esoteric elements of modular. Um, and that's basically the impetus, the impetus behind the selection of modules here, because really what I wanted to bring was morphogene. Morphogene is one of those things that I feel like is not easily replicable in any kind of other form. It's one of the things that I really love about modular is this, like, it's the kind of environment where something like this like, is the only place this could exist. It feels like a uniquely modular way of working with sound. So that was kind of the start of it. And I had to fill the case with things that would complement morphogene. Um, to start with, AI synthesis stomp box adapter is essentially here just to get sound in. Um, this top section, which is about sending sound out to an effects unit, not bother, bothered about that. It's this, this block here. If I can bring in a signal from my pedal board or an instrument, I just plug a guitar straight in if I want, treat it as an amplifier, and then from here I've got a modular level signal that I can pipe into Morphogene. And then after that, it's what do I do beyond Morphogene? Um, so End of chain, I like to have a reverb and a delay, and the effects aid is a nice way of having a reverb and a delay in, in 4 HP. Um, really compact. The ergonomics are okay, because you've got to you've got to memorize the digital settings that you've loaded in, um, and it can be custom to you, so you've got to remember what all these little dots mean, and that can be quite confusing. But the way I've got it set up at the moment, I know this configuration is a nice reverb and a nice delay combined, um, which is nice sort of subtle end of chain effect bit. Um, and then if we're talking 4HP modules that pack a punch, Oct is awesome. Everyone I think loves Oct. I don't know anyone who doesn't like it. It's just a whole load of free-flowing LFOs that are kind of they're musically linked but who knows. Okay, it goes up and down in a, in a triangle shape. Um, eight different outputs um, and you can really kind of use this as a nice source of modulation for a whole load of things in a reasonably compact form factor. Um, I wanted a filter in this system, and I've got a, <laughs> I've got a Steve's MS22 filter that I haven't actually built yet. So I need to get the soldering iron and put that together. And that's four HP, and that's great. But the Dual Dagger is an awesome filter, six HP and stereo, and just fabulous. Um, the one downside of this is there's no attenuation on any of the the inputs. So I managed to squeeze in here another little AI synthesis DIY module, uh, just a, a simple attenuator, so I can. I think attenuate the signals from Oct and not just be wildly oscillating from, from minus 5 to, to plus 5 volts. I can actually kind of su add subtle tweaks to the to subtle modulation to the filter. Morphogene mercifully has attenuators on each of its inputs, which makes life so much easier, um, and then a way to get the output out. I quite like the fact that this is completely self-contained. So um, send an instrument in here. And then this goes straight out to my headphones, or in this case to my recording device, and then to headphones. Um, 
it, this, this has a little clock in it, which can be useful. Um, it has its own little kind of mixing unit, which can be useful. Not really in this context, because I'm just using a single stereo uh, path through the lot. But, you know, you know it's... <laughs> It's a volume control. That's, this is primarily what it's here to be. I can I can then control control the output. Um, so let's find out actually what's going on here. So we'll start by just showing you what Morphogene is doing. Um, I've already recorded something into. I've got a whole load of various samples in here that I'm mucking around with. But if we send this to the output, just a really straightforward and, to be honest, pretty boring like little guitar loop but it's what I'm going to be using to make uh, an interesting ambient texture just to show the power of a system like this that even with such a simple starting seed of a sample you can have a lot of fun and you can really generate something that sounds pleasant and nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rig up the stereo path from Morphogene into the Jewel Dagger into the effects aid and then out to my output module. Everything's quite dry at the moment, but you can see now we can add a bit of reverb and delay, quite subtle. And the filter is doing its thing, so we've got a low pass, and a high pass. Combined, we can do band pass, and we can also kind of stereo effect these later on, which we'll do, which is great fun. Um, at the moment, the sample is running through completely dry. So we can really then, like, start to muck around with Morphogen Make it. So it allows us to change the speed. I'll tell you what, let's make it so that it's playing this loop back a bit quicker. As in, repeating the loop straight away rather than doing a pause. And let's just demonstrate a bit better. So we can really slow, we can reverse going on. But what I like to do is just crank up the morph knob straight away and that adds textures and harmonies over the top so it's pitch shifting in nice little ratios the way that it goes up and down. And this sound by itself, as simple as it is, is one of the reasons I love modular because I already quite like this. This is really nice. Add a bit of reverb and delay. And now comes the fun part. This is where we start getting oct into the mix and messing around. I think what I'll do is I'll go into my attenuator. And then we'll just modulate the low pass filter. So this one here. So as this fades, you can hear that we're changing this. Let's rank up, crank up the resonance as well, so you really hear what's going on. Reduce the amount that it's flying around with. We'll turn down the resonance a little bit. And then we'll do the same with a different LFO, going through a different attenuator. And we'll pipe that into the high pass. And now things are really starting to swirl around a little. Um, but the sample itself is still pretty static. So what we could do, I think, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> reversing guitar sounds, that's a neat trick. Like, so now it's playing in reverse, up an octave, 
swirling around, but because it's the same loop of audio every time, it gets a bit repetitive. So we can plug in some things to modulate this, so we can really like, use modular to its fullest. Let's start changing the sound, playing with modulation. I don't like how short that cable is. let these subtly alter the so what we're altering here is the size of the loop that we're playing back and then here we're modulating the point on the tape so imagine a long strip of tape that is our sample by altering the gene size we're changing the length of the section of that tape that we're playing and by changing the slide position we are modulating where on that piece of tape we start, so moving that block along. So the next step is to add a bit of stereo modulation to really kind of sweep some stuff around. One of the joys of the dual dagger, and the joy of a small system like this is kind of using every, using every um, jack that you've got and just you can send, send things modulate in the stereo field as well and why not also modulate the resonance <laughs> that was too much so maybe need another attenuator really but we could use another attenuator we could take this attenuator signal here whoa let's turn that down turn that down yeah so we can really more really much more subtly affects the thing there. So, so now we've got an absolute mess of cables. But something that sounds really gentle and lovely. And we're just going to let that play for a bit. One of the reasons I like tiny cases like this is that it allows you to focus in on one specific use case. Often modular can be quite overwhelming and the main ambition is to just get as many modules as possible and build up as big a system so that you can cover all eventualities. But like focusing in on a small case like the, the pallets or the little 4MS pod things um, can be really useful in terms of like helping you learn what you've got on how you can make the most of the modules that you have already. With a little bit of planning and a little bit of experimentation, it can help you like come up with something that is actually a self-contained instrument, something that will be of use by itself and allows you to learn it, get a bit of muscle memory as to where things fit together. In short, it's something that I find really satisfying, um, getting a lot out of a small case. <laughs>